Hello, Reunion family. This Sunday, as our team gathers to talk about our church plant and the future and where we're headed, we're going to talk about a really important issue, which is the idea of how do we reach the next generation with the gospel of Jesus Christ? And how do we infuse them with it so they can maintain their faith as they grow from children to youth, young adults, and into full maturity? How do we get there? What is that process? So we're going to talk a lot of nuts and bolts when we get together, a lot of details, specifics on what we're going to do to make that happen. But in the meantime, in this video, what I wanted to do is prepare you with just a little bit of background of why this topic is so important for us to talk about so early on in the planting process. Everybody who knows me knows that I'm not a huge fan of statistics because they can be abused and manipulated to say a lot of things. But here's one I want us to take a look at, and I'll tell you why. Sort of a, a compilation of both Barna and USA Today study tells us this, that 70 to 75% of Christian youth disconnect from church and God in their 20s. Now, I might want to argue about the, what exact percentage this is or what that word disconnect means, but I'll tell you this, the trend line has been pretty clear over the past decade or so, that youth, as they grow older, as they've gone through the church, and they've been highly active participants in the life of the church. They've gone through the programs. They've been through the youth events and the youth gatherings and all the conferences and all those things that youth do. What it tells us, what these stats and others tell us over a time, the trends are clear that those that are most engaged and involved, a good percentage drop off from God and from church as they go into sort of adult independence through their college years and beyond. And that's a troubling trend. Regardless of where the numbers specifically lie, that's a troubling trend. And we've got to do something different because what has happened, what we've done for so long, has not been successful. So looking at these trend lines, the reason I'm persuaded it is this way is because my experience of 10 years working with youth and being involved with youth over the years in a variety of places lets me know that those stats are pretty accurate to my own experience and what I see happening in the world. So here's what we need to do differently. The church has to change the way we minister. And I think there's four important components to an active youth involvement and engagement that we have to have as a church to be successful. We need family as a foundation. We need technology to engage. We need to have generational education and also intergenerational worship. Now here's the key. Of these four, I think that what the church does well is generational education. As a matter of fact, this tends to be what the predominance of what church offers to the congregation. It's that, you know, age-specific, age-targeted Sunday school or age-targeted midweek programs all focused on this generational education. Now, there's a lot of reasons why I think even that isn't necessarily sufficient. We've got to do a lot more to help uh, our young people understand the, the challenges they're facing culturally, the, the worldview out there, the atheist worldview that is really starting to take hold. Uh, we have not responded well to. We need to do a better job in that sort of the content of our education. But the church historically has done this one piece well, which is generational education. But we need these other three pieces to be successful. The second component we have not built well is family is the foundation. Matter of fact, I think the church has really failed this in that I think what has happened is that we have let the church supplant the family as the primary spiritual authority and educators of our kids. The way we've built our programs is really we've, as parents, often abdicate. We've given up our role as the primary educators and leaders of our kids, and we've said, hey, church, take care of this spiritual growth component. Now, is that true of all families and all churches? No, absolutely not. I'm just talking in terms of trends and what I've seen, and I'm telling based on my own experience, this is what we've done. And so we, as a church plant, have to make sure that we restore family as the foundation for our young people's education and spiritual growth and discipleship. The third component that I want us to really embrace as a church plant is this idea of intergenerational worship. And this is something I think we've completely missed in sort of evangelical trends and circles. You know, during the worship time on Sunday, we've sent our kids off to do their own 
generation specific ministries. But the problem is kids grow up and they've never worshiped with their parents. They've never prayed with their parents. They've never seen their parents in the in the midst of worship and service to the Lord. So we have got to create opportunities on a Sunday environment and also midweek opportunities where there's really an opportunity for families intergenerationally to worship God. The fourth part that we need to do much more successfully is use technology to engage. So there's been a lot of recent studies that have affirmed this, especially in the late teens and early 20s. Those young people are using technology to learn, to grow, to to get their worldview shaped is often through things like YouTube, which is one of the most dominant forms of media. Yet Christians don't really have a foothold in that. We don't have a stronghold that allows us to engage young people. So what we need to do better and what we will do better if we work together as a church plan is to use technology to leverage uh, a foothold and to build a stronghold into the lives of our kids. And that's what I want us to see us do. And we will be successful, again, if we work together in planting this church. So those are those four key components. Family is foundation, technology to engage, generational education, and intergenerational worship. And if we can be successful in building a foundation for this and putting together ministry opportunities for people to serve and be served by these four areas, I think we will be a church that takes the gospel to the next generation.